Maybe you've heard that online math tutoring is not hands-on or that it can't be fun. This simply is not true. There are so many cool online math manipulatives, and now it can get completely overwhelming to look for all of those manipulatives online. So I am going to save you a ton of time and show you just one spot where you can go for the best ones. Hi, my name is Joanne Kaminsky and I've been using online math tools since 2001. Now pretty early in my tutoring career, I had parents asking me if I did math tutoring. And one of the reasons is because 40% of kids that struggle with reading also struggle with math. And there were times when it was a good fit for me to take on these students. They struggled with vocabulary and how to read and determine important information with word problems. And I soon found out that I wanted to make learning math a little bit more hands-on. And there are some really cool tools out there that you can do this with. Now, one day I found the NCTM Illuminations website and it blew my mind away. Because it had resources separated by strand and grade level. Now this one tool took away all the hard work that I had to do to be able to find great tools so that I could have hands-on games for my students. So I'm going to show you some of these tools and games. So we can take a look here. This is the website and you can see that each of the math strands is broken up right on over here. We've got numbers, operation, algebra, geometry, measurement, data analysis, and probability. And you can take a look at, okay, what grade level do you need resources and tools for? So let's say I am working on numbers and operations and I'm working with pre-K to two, then I can click search to see what resources are already out there. We've got um, a coin box. We're going to be working with money. We got some different paper. We've got some different games here that are a lot of fun. We've got 10 frame. Let's take a look what 10 frame looks like. So now I can, I can count and really what we're really trying to work on with this tool is the concept of what numbers add up to 10. So here we end up having six. And now we can take a look, we have zero that are empty, right? Because all 10 are filled. We can look at that, we can say eight. And this is really, you wanna be able to eventually, if they are counting, you wanna eventually get to the point where they're able to just look at that and say there's eight because they can see it. Now, you can also do a build game. So it's gonna tell you how many move to the frame and then you click done. So this is really working on that one-to-one -one coordination with, with things. Here's one called fill. So now I can actually move these on over or I can just answer two. She says, how many more circles to fill the frame? I can say, I know that I need three. Now I can actually physically put three on over here. One, two, three. We can even play some adding games or we can play all the games. So this is a great tool for really building that concept of base 10 and also being able to say, okay, what numbers add and subtract and, and all of that great stuff for up to 10. So we are going to take a look at the next one. Now this game is called the factor game. So you, are, you either can play against the computer or you can play against another person. I'm gonna choose here to play against the computer and we're gonna be able to find the factors. So let's take a look. Um, I'm gonna start off with a low number because it's gonna be really hard for them to be able to come up with any factors. So I'm gonna choose number two and push okay. And now they're choosing for me three. So I've got three as my factor for this. And now I'm gonna choose for them number eight. No, well, let me do eight either. Let me do pick factors of eight. So I've got four and I can't do two again. But we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to see who is gonna get the highest score at the end. So choose a number, I'm gonna choose 16. Nope, because there's none left for 16. And if you do that, then you lose your turn. So they chose 14, that means I can choose seven. But other than that, all the other ones have been chosen. 
So right now the computer is beating me. So now I get to choose a number. I could choose 15. And they're choosing 12, so the only number I got is six. And okay. And the computer beat me. Uh, uh, uh. Wah, wah, wah. But that's a factor game. It's pretty fun because then the kids have to think about, okay, where, what numbers or factors of this. And you can't repeat any factors that have already been chosen. This is a really cool tool. It's called Geometric Solids. And you're able to actually count the faces that are on a any, any type of thing that you want to take a look at. So you can do a tetrahedron, a cube, an octahedron, octahedron, uh, dodecahedron, or an icosahedron. Um, so let's take a look at icosahedron. It looks just like that. Holy cow, that's a lot of pieces, isn't it? But you take a look. I'm just going to show you something really simple with the cube. But you can take a look and see how many um, faces it has. So I can take a look. So you see here, I'm I'm coloring it. So I can see how many faces. So I've shown uh, three faces. But then I can also click on the net. To, it's going to open it up. And you're going to see how I can't see the other three. But now I can select them all. And now I have how many faces there are, which is cool. Then I can take a look at the edges and I can say, okay, so for edges, I've got uh, these vertices. I can go on each of the vertices here and it will show me that I have eight vertices for this shape. And I can put it back as a solid and take a look at it. But this also then, pulls it apart for me to be able to see all of them, which is really cool. And then I can take a look at the edges and I can click on each of the, the lines for the edges. Now I got rid of that on accident. So I'm going to click all of the edges, even inside, oops, even inside. I want to be right on that line there. And I can see I'm missing one. See, it says 11. I missed one right there. And now when I put it back together, it shows me all the vertices, all of the edges, and all of the faces. And this really helps us being able to come up with um, helping kids understand these three specific terms in a hands-on fashion for them to really manipulate and see. So I really, really like this. Now this is a pan balance activity where kids are determining what equals what. So if I put one square over here and I put a square over here, we can see that they are equal. One red square equals one red square. But as soon as I put a blue circle and a triangle over here, we can see clearly the triangle weighs more than the circle. But as soon as I add a triangle over onto this side, and I add a circle onto this side, I can equal it out again. But even something cooler that can happen, and take a look at, okay, what happens when I do this? Well, now we know that this weighs more than all the others. So if I take a look, I can guess what the weights are for these, and I can say, okay, the, the red is one, the blue is two, and the triangle is three, and we'll guess four here. Let's see. Nope, it's not four. But what happens if we take this off? Let's take them all off here. Let's add this here and see what happens. So that made it go down a little bit. I know that the blue is two. All right, so the blue is heavier than this um, this one here. So we could just keep playing with it. There's And it has different ones, right? So now they're going to be different equals if I change the numbers up here. And you can play with it. You can guess the weights. It's really, it's, it's, it's thinking about like algebraic skills as well because you're thinking not only you're dealing with weight and balance and what things equal each other, what weighs heavier more, but you're having to think about, okay, if this weighs this much and this is heavier, then what could this number be? Which is really great math skills. Here's a concentration game where I have to find fractions that are equivalent to each other. So I click on one of the shutters 
and here I've got one third, and now I want to look for the number one third. I've got one half there, so that doesn't equal. Here I've got one, two, three, four fifths, and one fifth. Two thirds, one half. One fifth, one fifth. Woo, got one. Two fifths. Oh, there's the one half. All right, there we go. Woo, got it again. Again, you can play this one player, two player um, to, to have fun. But this is just a fun way to be able to talk about equivalent fractions and different ways to express them. So these are some cool tools. If you guys have liked what you've seen so far with illuminations, um, tell me inside of the comments section. I'd love to hear what it is that you have to say. Uh, this is a really great tool. What kinds of tools have you guys found as well that you have loved to be able to make uh, math a little bit more hands-on, a little bit fun, have some play some games? Let me know in the comments. So I personally love to be able to use these kinds of tools with my students when it comes to, you know, teaching math concepts and that kind of stuff. But I really think it's really cool that I can now take a look at the gaps where my students already have and find tools and resources. There's even lesson plans inside of that NCTM Illuminations uh, website so that if I'm a little stuck on how I could teach a concept or think about a concept differently, there is a lesson plan that will show and guide me um, on a fun way to kind of think about it. So I really like that opportunity as well. So thank you guys so much for joining. If you think that another teacher or tutor would benefit from this, definitely pass it on, share it with them, and hit like and subscribe. Um, as always, my name is Joanne Kaminsky, the online tutor business coach helping you get found, hired, and referred. Here's till next time.